Hi friends, it's Hannah, and I'm so glad you're here. Today, we're going to be making a fabric vase made out of very simple products. We're using these three pieces from the Dollar Tree, some plain white cotton fabric, and a product called Stiffy. I've never used it before, so it's new to me. I begin by adding the black planter from the Dollar Tree on top of the small bowl. I add E6000 and in between the E6000, I add hot glue to get the E6000 is for a very strong adhesion and the hot glue gives it that quick adhesion. Make sure not to add your hot glue on top of the E6000 or it will not stick properly. And once that's in place, I add the large clear bowl using the E6000 and the hot glue. Next, I add Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and I start by giving a coat of the chalk paint onto the black planter. I want to ensure that once I drape my white fabric that no dark color shows through. But in the end, what I end up doing is giving two coats of the Waverly chalk paint over the black planter and also on to the clear bowls as well, just to ensure that I have an even color under the entire piece. And once it's completely dry, I drape the fabric over the entire piece. I want to leave at least two inches along the bottom of the piece, maybe a little bit more, because I'm going to be stretching the fabric. In the center of the piece, I draw a circle so that I will know exactly where the center is and so that I can cut the circle out. And then I cut the corners off of the piece so that it's round like the bottom of the bowls and then I don't have too much overhang. I want the overhang to be even all the way around the planter. I fold the fabric and I cut all of the corners based on the cut that I made on the first corner so that all of the corners will have the same amount of material cut off of them. And this makes it easier to ensure that you have the same amount of overhang all around the planter. I open the fabric back up, cut a small piece in the center of the circle, and then I cut all around the circle going slightly outside of where I made the mark with a black magic marker because I don't want that to show up even though it's going to be on the inside of the bowl. I want to ensure that everything remains the same color and that no dark lines show up. And once I have completed cutting out the circle, I begin to add slits onto the inside of the circle, probably about an inch and a half long. And the reason I'm doing this is because the inside of the bowl is round and this will not fit into the inside of the bowl unless we open up the fabric. And that's the reason that I'm cutting slits all around the circle of the fabric. Next, I'm using my stiffy and I shake it up very well. And I place my fabric into the bowl and then I begin pouring the stiffy onto it. And I just add a little bit at a time because I want to make sure that 
the fabric is completely wet but I don't want it to be dripping wet. I just want to make sure that all of the fabric has completely absorbed this product. So I add a little bit at a time and I move the fabric around a lot in the bowl and I check it and I make sure that the entire piece of fabric is not dripping but that it is completely saturated in the stiffy and once i'm satisfied with that i re i bring back the pieces that i have glued together and i drape the fabric the wet fabric over the entire three bowls that i have adhered together and I make sure that everything is even in the middle and I begin holding it at the top and pulling on the fabric because I want to make pleats in the fabric and I want to release any of the wrinkles that have gathered in the fabric when I was bunching it up inside of the bowl. So I hold the top of the bowl and I move all around the entire piece of the bowl and I pull down and it's a pretty, I really tug on it. I pull on it so that the wrinkles come out and I want to be able to put the pleats inside the fabric. I really take my time with this I go around the bowl several times and keep tugging on the fabric and trying to get out as many wrinkles as possible and getting the fabric ready to be pleated. And then once I'm happy with the way that it looks, I gather the fabric around the base of the large bowl to see how it looks. And I'm really loving the way that that looks, how the pleats are coming out. It has a few wrinkles, but I'll work on getting those out later. And in order to keep that in close to the bowl and keep the pleats on, and the fabric close to the bowl, I use uh, floral wire. And actually you can use anything you want to tie the product on, but I use floral wire and I tighten it around the base of the largest bowl. And then I just, once again, I hold the top of the bowl and I pull the fabric down to make beautiful pleats and release the creases. And once again, I'm very patient and I work around the bowl and take my time. And if you'll notice on the left-hand side, it's a little bit higher. So when I do pull it down, I have to tighten that wire back up again so that I can really get the pleats in right and remove as many wrinkles as possible. So I tighten up the wire and I continue the process once it's tightened up and I just go around the bowl working very patiently and pull those wrinkles out and add the pleats or at least try to add the pleats and make them look as pretty as possible and try to have them lay down. Although I do want it to have an organic look, so I don't want the pleats to be perfect. What I really want them to do is lay down and remove the wrinkles. And once I'm happy with the way that the top looks, I pull down on the fabric and I go down to the bottom of the planter and I add another 
wire and I use floral wire and I tie it tight and then I pull from the bottom and I pull the pleats from the middle and at the bottom and I tuck the pieces underneath the bowl at the bottom and until I'm satisfied with the way that everything looks. And I'm really loving the way that this face is turning out. I think that it's absolutely beautiful. Once that it's all once it's all done, I go back to the top again and I pull on the fabric because I'm still trying to tighten up the pleats and to remove wrinkles and I I take my time I just go around and gently pull on the fabric and pull out any wrinkles and pull those pleats in as tight as possible and the stiffy as well as it works for stiffening the fabric is not sticky so after I have pressed everything down, I use a high strength spray adhesive and I spray that all along the inside of the bowl where I have cut the slits in the fabric and I gently press down just to make sure that I've got really good adhesion at the top of this bowl because I want everything to lay perfectly flat inside of the bowl. Once the bowl is partially dry, I remove the wire from the top of the bowl. And I really like the way that that looks. Although it didn't stick, it draped beautifully and I love the way that it looks. I used a kebab stick that was made out of wood. Actually, you can use anything. And I just went over the piece. It was still slightly damp to work on removing any more wrinkles and working on getting to laying the pleats down flat and once I was finished with that, I removed the wire at the base of the bowl and the indentation stayed in that because it was nearly dry and I really liked the way that that looked. And I took my heat gun and very carefully so that I wouldn't scorch the fabric, I worked all the way around the piece to make sure it was dry. And then I cut a strip of fabric that was about 42 inches long and I frayed the edges. It's the same fabric that I used to drape it, but I frayed the edges and I tied it tightly along where the crease is in the fabric. And I just did a fingertip bow. It's the same kind of bow that you make when you tie your shoes. And I just worked on the bow until I was completely happy with the way that it looked. I opened it all up on both sides because I wanted the frayed fabric to show. And I just worked with it until I was satisfied with the way that it looked. And this piece is complete and it's absolutely beautiful. It has such an elegant look. It's a little bit rustic and so elegant. And here it is against a dark background so that you can see it better. And then I added greenery and I added birds on twigs and the twigs actually light up at night. And uh, there's a tutorial for the birds on the twigs, and I will link it in my description box if you want to make it. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that this inspires you to make something beautiful. If you enjoyed the project, 
please share it with your friends. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification button so you'll be notified the next time that I make a video. Until then, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it so much, and I will see you next time.